Karma Explained by Electromagnetism Published on April 13, 2011, by Carl Donk A while ago I saw a documentary on electrodynamics and free energy, where Tom Bearden was interviewed explaining the concept behind free, or radiant, energy. The documentary is titled, Hidden Electrodynamics, and the Final Secret of Free Energy, and is the fifth part of the Energy from the Vacuum series. If you've never heard of this series, I highly recommend you check it out. In the interview Bearden explains how it's possible to get energy out of the vacuum, seemingly out of nowhere, by creating a charge, and having the environment, or vacuum, react to that, essentially trying to neutralize that charge. It's important to understand that this isn't just theory anymore, as there are working concepts of machines that demonstrate how this works. All of this can be seen in the documentaries. This knowledge exists for a long time now, ever since the time of Nikola Tesla. If Tesla could have had enough funding for his research, the world we live in today would have looked very different. Instead Tesla's research was sabotaged and stopped because J.P. Morgan, who was financing most of Tesla's research at the time, didn't want free energy technology to become available to everyone. That would have been against his financial interests, see the movie, The Secret of Nikola Tesla for more on this. So instead, all of this technology, free energy, anti-gravity etc., was held back from reaching the public and today the world is being financially milked by those in control with alternative energy sources that are expensive, finite, pollute the planet and create artificial scarcity. Even today, as Bearden explains, people are experiencing all kinds of resistance when they try to research free energy and try to develop technology that makes use of free energy. It's either difficult to get funding for it, or scientists end up missing or are assassinated. Meanwhile the entire population of this planet is being held back so that a small group that's in control can profit. Millions of people are living in poverty and are dying because, supposedly, there are not enough resources to feed them and take care of them. But the reason I'm writing this is because I think the theory behind free energy, based on electromagnetism, can be used to explain the concept of karma and the way the universe works. I think the goal in this universe, or in nature, is to constantly have balance. If things aren't balanced, then the universe reacts and makes sure balance is restored. So in the case of the theory behind free energy, as Bearden explains, once you've created a negative charge in a vacuum, seemingly out of nowhere positive particles appear and surround the negative charge. What was thought to be empty space around the negative charge suddenly isn't empty anymore. This process is called broken symmetry, particles that were previously not observable appear and are now observable. This is easier to understand once you realize that what we think of as empty space or vacuum really isn't empty at all. The reality is that there's a lot of matter even in what we think of as empty space, but we're just not capable of seeing or detecting it. Consider that humans are only capable of seeing a fraction of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Imagine how much exists around us that our senses and our technology simply cannot detect, not unless it enters our range of observable reality. So once a negative or positive charge exists, the universe responds by supplying the energy to bring back balance. And I believe that in our daily life this is also the case. I'll try to explain this by using a simple example with two persons, person A and person B. Each person is made up of energy, we're all essentially energy, positive and negative, and in an ideal situation there's balance. In their daily interactions person A and person B exchange energy with each other. Consider what happens when person A decides to do something negative to person B, for example misleading or hurting person B. By doing so, person A projects some of his negative energy onto person B. The result is that person A becomes positively charged, more positive energy present, and person B becomes negatively charged, more negative energy present. So you can probably imagine what happens next. Since the goal in the universe is to have balance, the universe responds to this situation by sending negative energy to person A and positive energy to person B. 
And that's when what people refer to as karma comes into play. If you project negative energy out onto people, you're going to get negative energy back. If you do something bad to someone, you should expect to get it back. On the other hand, if you're hurt or otherwise need help, the universe will respond by sending help. It's difficult to say how fast the universe reacts, but usually it takes time, and maybe things are brought back into balance by other events and other persons also interacting with person A and B, even before the universe responds. It's also important to note that things like conscience and intention may also play an important role in all of this. Whether or not the energy person A projects onto person B is negative or positive from the perspective of person A may depend entirely upon person A's intention and conscience. Was person A's intention to really hurt person B did he know the consequences? Or was it to help? Or was person A not even aware of what was caused to person B? Similarly, the way person B perceives the energy projected onto him by person A may influence the way the universe responds to person B. Consider what happens when person A projects positive energy onto person B from a neutral starting position, for example by helping person B or by giving something to person B. The result of that is that person A becomes negatively charged, more negative energy present, and person B becomes positively charged, more positive energy present. The universe then responds to this by sending positive energy to person A and negative energy to person B in order to achieve balance. So for person A we see the concept of do good and you will receive it back. However, in this particular example, person B ends up with too much positive energy and even though he may have done nothing wrong, the universe sends negative energy his way. We could argue that since person B was in a neutral or balanced state before receiving positive energy from person A, person B didn't really need it and should have declined. Or, person B could have accepted the positive energy, but then make sure that he gives back as much of it as possible to someone else who needs it instead of holding onto it. And so what we see here is that if you think that you're going to take a lot more than you give in life, things will get difficult for you. Life is about giving and receiving and the balance between those two. The universe will always try to maintain balance. So when it comes to giving and receiving, we all should strive to maintain a balanced life. Don't take more than you need, but also think of others. If you're blessed with a lot of positive things in life, consider giving back to those who are in need. This is exactly what happens if we go back and look at the example of the electron in a vacuum. Being negatively charged, the universe responds by surrounding this negative charge with positive particles. What happens, as Bearden explains, is that the electron continuously absorbs these positive particles, but as soon as it has absorbed enough, it releases the absorbed energy again in the form of a photon. It keeps absorbing energy, but it also keeps giving back energy, at such a rate that everything appears to be balanced and static. In reality, there's a continuous process of give and take, going on at incredible speed. All the universe really wants is balance. It makes no distinction between positive and negative, or good and bad. Those are labels that we put on things depending on how we perceive them, and depending on our understanding of our reality. To the universe everything just is. Nobody gets rewarded, and nobody gets punished. The universe doesn't pick sides. The only thing that really matters is balance. This concept is also used in the Matrix movies, where the architect character is tasked with maintaining balance in the Matrix. Quote, in the Matrix Revolutions, the Oracle explains to Neo that the true purpose of the architect is to balance the mathematical equations that make up the programming of the matrix. And he is unable to see the world as anything beyond a series of equations. It is also because of this that he is unable to comprehend choice and free will and cannot see the results of such choices, as they are no more than variable factors in an equation to him. End quote. So karma is essentially just the universe trying to maintain internal balance of energy. Thank you for listening. 
This article was originally published on Carl Donk's blog at blog.carldonk.com. Remember to visit for regular updates. You can also find this content published on archive.org and lbry.tv. Remember to save a local copy of this video and any other content that you would like to continue to have access to in the future. You never know, those goddamn motherfuckers in big tech might censor this content in the future.